Hey everyone, this week on the Inkwell, we're taking a look at Papier Plume Peacock Blue. So this is the second of the Papier Plume inks that I recently picked up at Van S 1938. And I must say, it's pretty obvious why I picked this one up. I wanted to see what Papier Plume could do in a budget turquoise. And I think they delivered. I mean, we'll see a little bit more in the review here, but you can see just from the writing sample coming out of the Pilot Custom 845 that the color is already something that is right up my alley. And with the price to volume ratio, I can't argue with that either. Now, I will say before we dive deep into the sink that one of the things that drew me to it was the color profile itself. It kind of does remind me of Visconti Turquoise, and we'll see a little bit more of that similarity here in a few moments. But let's go ahead and dive into the review. So we're gonna briefly revisit one of the things that I really love about Papier Plume inks, and that is the bottle. Once again, understated glass bottle, metal cap, and it tells you what you're getting into on the bottle itself. And the color on Peacock Blue there is actually really close to what you get from the ink. So I really like that representation. And once you get the ink into your pen, it is one of the most pleasant writing experiences that I've had in a turquoise ink even beating out Pelican 4001. And a lot of that I believe has to do with the color profile that we have here. You've got a nice light turquoise on the lighter shades going into a very nice vibrant blue in the mid-tones. And even though you don't sheen, when you do get oversaturated, you still keep that nice blue color. And this is a blue color that you can still get in a fine nib like we have here in this CSI nib from Mark Bacchus on the Pilot 823. Now, there is one caveat though, if you do have a wet nib, the dry time is going to be affected. Even out of the fine nib, we were looking at 25 seconds before fully dry. Out of the medium nib, which is in a slightly drier pen, we were dry by 20 seconds. So the pen really is gonna make all the difference here. And looking at the comparison from the 845 to the 823, from a medium nib to a fine CSI nib, you do see where some of these differences come in. One is a drier pen, so you're seeing a lot more of the lighter blues going into those mid-tones, whereas the 823, having been set up as a wetter nib to make up for the finer nib, does give you more of those mid-tones to the darker tones, and it does stay wetter on the paper longer. What I will say though, is what we have here with Peacock Blue is an ink that knows how to cater to a broad spectrum. Out of a drier nib, you're gonna get those nice, lighter turquoise tones. Out of a wetter nib, you're gonna get more of those piercing blues leaking into the turquoise. Either way, it's a good dynamic and it's one of the things that helps make this ink a pretty close to much have in a collection. But let's go ahead and take a look at the water sample before jumping to conclusions. And one of the things I did for this water sample was using both pens that we used for the writing sample because I did see enough of a difference from pen to pen and I wanted to see if that would make a difference when it came to the water resistance. So let's go ahead and get started. And much like many of the other turquoise inks that we've taken a look at here on the channel, I'm really not seeing much in the way of water resistance here. On a scale of one to five, like Jet Pens uses, this would definitely be a one. The water pretty much has its way with the ink, and you're not left with much of what you had originally written in the first place. But does that really hurt us overall when we're talking about Peacock Blue? I don't think so. Once again, we're looking at $8 for 30 mils of a really good turquoise ink, that's really easy on the pen. It's got good flow, good lubrication, and it's really dynamic from pen to pen, feed to feed, person to person. And that's something I really like to see in an ink. It has more character than just in your face blue. So 10 out of 10 would definitely buy again. And this bottle is staying on the shelf with the rest of my ever growing turquoise collection. 
So that's it for this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow the channel on Twitter and Instagram, links down below. If you want to get episodes of Two Guys Zero Planners uncut and help support this YouTube channel, then head on over to patreon.com and support the channel there. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next week.